This video covers all the topics that I wish I knew when I started traveling in Uzbekistan. Consider this as a video travel guide and if you have any questions, drop in your comments below. If there's a particular topic that interests you, then feel free to navigate to that section. Referring to my laptop here. Let's start with the e-visa process. As of May 2022, uh, Uzbekistan has established a visa-free regime for citizens of 86 countries and uh, e-visa for citizens of 57 countries. So for Indians, we need to apply for e-visa. It's quite a simple process, uh, straightforward, and you get the visa within like two to three working days. So if you're interested in watching a video on e-visa to Uzbekistan, then let me know in the comments below. Based on request, I can take it up as well. So let's go with the flights now. So one way flights uh, from Delhi to Tashkent is about 15,000 rupees. Preferably from Delhi because that's where you would get the best, best connections. Like I flew from Bangalore to Delhi, a separate flight, and then another flight from Delhi to Tashkent. So there are like two airlines. One is Uzbekistan Airways, which is Airlines of Uzbekistan, and it's a direct flight less than three hours from Delhi to Tashkent. And the other flight is Air Astana, which is the flight of uh, Kazakhstan. Most likely you will have a layover in Almaty. If you are not traveling from India, then Delhi or Istanbul is where you would get uh, better connections. Tashkent would most likely be your first stop in Uzbekistan. That's where you will be starting your journey in Uzbekistan. So coming to the stays, about $10 for hostels, $20 for guest houses and $30 for hotels. And I'll talk about the entire budget later. And coming to transportation, uh, something I really liked about Uzbekistan is the high-speed train. So there's something called Afrosiyop, which is like the high-speed train which runs between uh, Tashkent, Samarkand and Bukhara. And uh, these are like so good, <laughs> these trains. Actually, they are so comfortable and clean and they are like less than $10. And even the economy seats are like really good. A lot of tourists actually opt for this, but when it comes to trains, Keep these two things in mind because they are so important. One is that you need to reach the railway station 30 minutes before for security procedures uh, because otherwise it can be tricky. Uh, I have missed train once uh, because I got a little late. And another is that uh, the trains get filled very quickly, especially Afrosio. So if you're traveling during the season time, then make sure that you actually uh, book at least a month in advance, I would say. It might cost about like $10 per ticket so yeah it's not too expensive as well and this is like the primary mode of transportation between the cities so within the city you can actually use uh, the public transport of uh, like metro stations in Tashkent or uh, Mashrut cars which are like mini buses or you can use uh, Yandex which is similar to Uber I have used Yandex in like Tashkent, Samarkand and Bukhara it is good because you don't really have to then bargain with the uh, taxi drivers it's a fixed price and uh, one thing that was surprising for me uh, in Tashkent especially was how cheap these taxis were like I remember there were times when I uh, booked a taxi which is about like five kilometers from where I was and it would be like about a dollars even less than one dollars <laughs> which is insane coming to places to visit in Uzbekistan so Tashkent, Samarkand, Bukhara, Kiva. So these are like the major Silk Road cities of Uzbekistan, which a lot of tourists end up visiting. And then uh, there is ARLC, which you can do a day trip from Kiva and Fergana Valley, which is on the east of Uzbekistan. I would say you would need at least like seven to 10 days when you're traveling to Uzbekistan. On an average, 10 days would be better so that you can actually enjoy and have some free time as well while you're traveling to these different places uh, so two days in Tashkent three days in Samarkand two days in Bukhara and three days in Kiva along with the day trip to ARLC mostly in like the tourist areas it's easier to find because uh, they also know that there are different kind of tourists coming in so they make sure that there is some vegetarian or vegan option but uh, if you're going to like a local place chances are you may not find anything apart from like soups or salads that's that can be a little tricky so one thing that really helped me was the happy cow app that i used uh, and happy cow app basically has a list of restaurants uh, which has vegetarian or vegan food so you, if you type in a particular location it would show all these restaurants so it is quite handy and useful i would say it would cost about like five dollars on an average for food 
there were also times when I actually went to a sandwich place and it was like one and a half dollars. It can be quite cheap. I think it depends on the places that you end up going to. Some of the foods that you can try is of course pilaf. Pilaf is like the national dish of Uzbekistan and all these Central Asian countries and they're like so proud of their pilafs. Pilaf is made of like long grain rice, onions, carrots and chunks of lamb and it's served usually with bread and salad and it's similar to pilaf in India. Samsa quite similar to puff that you find here in India because it's flaky and manti is like dumpling that I actually got to try in a Samarkand uh, so there was this uh, place very close to Registan Square and uh, it was serving like pumpkin dumplings so that I got to try and it was pretty good <laughs> it was actually filling it's not like a starter it's a meal in itself uh, shashlik uh, kebab so this is mostly for uh, non-vegetarians, <laughs> vegetable shashlik, you may be able to find like capsicum and stuff, but nothing to brag home about. So I, I wouldn't suggest uh, going for it. Bread kind of accompanies every meal. So if you are actually ordering some food, uh, the waiter would also ask uh, if you need like bread or salad along with it. So it's kind of something that people eat. And I think people eat a lot of food there. Like whenever I ended up going to restaurants, I would see people eating like plates full of food <laughs> if i order one dish the waiter would look at me funny because you know that's all you're ordering like <laughs> what the hell are you even eating kind of thing uh, kind of look that i used to get and uh, do try the samarkand bread when you're there because it's extremely popular and apparently it's only made in that region and uh, i have seen people from like even uh, tajikistan so they actually come to Samarkand to uh, get these, buy these breads and they take home with them. So the uh, Samarkand bread is like so popular there. These breads are very hard. <laughs> these are not like soft breads. So uh, sometimes it has been hard for me to even chew these breads, but I've seen people actually dipping them in green tea and then eating it. So that would make it a little softer. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's like too common, but yeah, that's something that I noticed. And the fruits here are so good. Uh, I tried the melons here and they are like the juiciest melons that I've tried and also uh, watermelons not just like musk melons but also watermelons they're like so good the watermelons are like massive at least like three times the size Uzbeks are big tea drinkers every meal generally starts and ends with tea but yeah uh, milk tea is not so common also try fruit tea when you're there because that was something uh, unexpected that I ended up finding uh, and I tried it in like in Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan and it was like really good it has uh, it has like real fruits in it and uh, it has a little bit of flavor which makes it even more exciting than uh, green tea for example. Iran is uh, something like a yogurt based drink that uh, that you can find in like supermarkets or in like local shops uh, even like on the street uh, so i tried it a few times and it was different a little bit <laughs> every time i think the degree of fermentation also varies but yeah it was uh, especially on like hot days it's like <laughs> really refreshing and good and you'll see a lot of like chai khana in uh, in this region so chai khana is basically a tea house which is a traditional central asian place for drinking tea uh, and you'll see a lot of locals uh, relaxing and chatting over here so where you basically sit uh, cross-legged and uh, that's kind of an experience in itself so it has a different kind of vibe water was a little bit of a challenge here for sure it's not easy finding like drinking water so most of the times i would try to fill water in guest houses uh, before i left for the day uh, so they don't really have filtered water here and most of the times it would be like boiled water that you need to carry with you and even when you ask in restaurants they don't give you like uh, normal water they always give like bottled water which is a little bit of a problem and i think it's always best to carry uh, like these uh, live straw bottles when you're going to these places or any other filtered uh, bottles right so i think that's best to carry when you're here so that you can uh, directly fill from tap water uh, i'll add the link uh, to the bottle that i'm talking about in the description so that you can check it out infrastructure so I had a very different idea about Uzbekistan before I traveled there. Like I used to think that uh, it will be quite underdeveloped and all that. But these are like like Tashkent and Samarkand. They're like any other uh, cities. 
the roads are wide there were like eight lane roads right in the middle of the city center in tashkent it was so shocking for me even between the cities uh, you have like these high speed trains so overall infrastructure uh, for tourists is like really good you have a wide range of hotels like i talked about hotels hostels guest houses even like there is this e visa or visa free situation for a lot of countries uh, so they have made it a lot easier for tourists to enter and also travel around uzbekistan so it is one of the easier countries that you can travel to in central asia for sure <laughs> best season to visit april to june or september to early november would be a good time to visit otherwise the weather can be extremely hot so if you have watched my previous video on bukhara you would know that it was so hot i ended up traveling in the middle of summer actually in july so uh, when it comes to language there is definitely a language barrier when you are traveling in uzbekistan if you know either uh, uzbek or russian language it, it would be really useful and i think it's good to learn a few words like i always try to pick up a few words when i'm in a new country that kind of warms you up to the locals <laughs> you know you end up having you know, at least small conversations it kind of uh, they are also more willing to help you out when when you try to learn their language make sure you remember this best nyasa if you are a vegetarian now you can download google translate app that's how i had most of my conversations with the locals so one thing that really surprised me about uzbekistan is uh, tourist please so you find tourist please booths in every major cities in uzbekistan uh, and these are primarily for tourist safety purposes which is very interesting because you can see that the government are taking uh, government is taking initiatives to make sure that uh, tourists are safe in uzbekistan which is a great step and <laughs> even when you are there you realize that uh, the locals are like so friendly and welcoming you don't really feel unsafe like i was traveling in uzbekistan for two weeks by myself and it is definitely like one of the safest countries that i've traveled to even when i tell people that i visited uzbekistan they are always uh, thinking how dangerous or how unsafe it is but it cannot be further from the truth so when it comes to budget uh, about like 50 dollars per day is what you might be looking for again this is on a higher side i know people who have uh, traveled for like 20 dollars 30 dollars per day as well which is also possible and most days i have also spent i think 20 30 dollars here are the prices that you can expect in uzbekistan 1 million uzbekistan som is actually 100 dollars which is like 8000 rupees and uh, like i remember there were like times when i used to go to atms to withdraw money and <laughs> i would get this wads of cash actually which is insane and this is like you know uh, the vietnam or indonesia where you where you feel like a millionaire this is the same kind of feeling is it cheap to travel to uzbekistan for sure but is it really the cheapest country in the world According to the Worldwide Cost of Living Report 2022 by The Economist, Tashkent is the fifth cheapest city in the world out of 172 cities that were considered in this report. Regarding the cost of living reports of countries, I couldn't find a reliable source to substantiate the claim. The reports that I found on the internet were inconsistent when it came to rankings. The only consistent thing in the reports is that Uzbekistan is in the top 20 cheapest countries in the world. So, let's leave it at that. So I've actually done three border crossings which involves uh, Uzbekistan. All of these were quite straightforward like I did not have any issues. So I cannot share all the information here in the video due to limited time so make sure to check out the blog which will be in the description. And talking about my personal experience like if you have seen the previous videos uh, for example Samarkand I have talked about it there as well. People are crazy about Bollywood and therefore they're crazy about Indians. So you are pretty much treated like a celebrity everyone wants to take a picture with you there have been so many cases like all over central asia people would approach me ask me where i'm from and when they find out that i'm from india they want to take a picture with me so <laughs> it is quite funny actually most of the time they only know uzbek or russian and i know english so we don't have a common language but when i say i'm from india they basically <laughs> tell the names of the celebrities i'm like yeah yeah sure <laughs> and uh The younger generations are, of course, uh, fans of Shah Rukh Khan. Uh, so yeah, it's insane the 
Bollywood fandom there like you really have to be there to actually experience it and another thing that really surprised me here is souvenir shopping so what i found out later was that bukhara is uh, where a lot of artisans skilled artisans have settled throughout the generations and they make these really exquisite and uh, incredible works of art of uh, ranging from different products like carpets and um, knife making and uh, suzani like embroidery work and paintings definitely make sure that you have some space in your bag so that you can uh, shop for souvenirs here i still regret not buying a painting in bukhara because that was the start of my trip and i was thinking that i'll come back later and that's when i'll buy because i did not want to carry around uh, these stuff <laughs> everywhere and i still regret it because this was like a painting of uh, travelers and locations of the silk road and it was so beautiful it was like $25 i think i have to go back to bukhara just so that i can buy that painting because i think that's going to be a treasure for sure so if you have any questions about traveling to uzbekistan let me know in the comments below i'll definitely add a link to the blog post as well you can refer to that when you're traveling to uzbekistan and uh thank you for watching and i hope this video helped and i'll see you in the next video